closing gloves here and today we're gonna look at sound design with citrus and we're gonna look at how to make this sound you may prefer it dry so uh, effects just turn the effects off or at least more dry. So I have this like cheesy drum loop. Well, not cheesy, I guess it's just drum loop. That's the sound we were going for. So it's a pretty simple sound. It's one that is used very often though. And so I'm using it as an example of a pluck type bass because it sort of has this, this element of pluckiness to it. That boom, boom, boom. And that sort of dynamic, sort of intuitive playability. Is something that I feel like a lot of people use these days. So let's talk about what's going on here. So I have four, um, do I have four? Yeah, I have four operators going. One of them is not going out. I just have one, two, three, and four. So first let's talk about what's happening here with one and two. So one and two is going out. I'm going to turn the effects off. So two, and we're going to make a patch. So we're going to make this patch as well. We're going to make something similar. Uh, I don't like it when people, sometimes I'll do it depending on how complicated the patch is, but I feel like watching someone make it is very beneficial. So, so that's the majority of the sound right there. These things are sort of just icing on the cake. So one is going out. One is just a sine wave at 0.5. I could have just, I could play it higher and just make it one, but the ratios, after you kind of set your ratios, you kind of want to be wise about how you're doing this at the beginning, what range you're going to be playing in. It will dictate the octave that you use because if you change your ratio, then it's going to affect all your other stuff if you're doing any FM. So I'm doing a little bit of FM. I'm uh, FMing one by two. So yeah, one by two. And two is getting FM'd by three, um, just a touch. Three is also going out. Three, so okay, so... I'm going to just trust that you watched my Learn FM uh, video series. So it's a, it's a middle ratio. It's a mid-ratio type deal. It's a one. So it's harmonically related, but it's barely, barely doing it. So if I were to move this, though, it just doesn't have that same sort of that texture that I'm looking for. I'm looking for that sort of metallic thing, and I knew I wanted it to be in the lower range. So... So it adds that little bit of high harmonics. There might be a little bit of aliasing in there, but it's, uh, I don't think so. I didn't experiment because I had the tone that I wanted. And so on this sound, I would turn the render setting off because I like it the way it is. So, okay. And then two, two is doing operating one and it's a ratio of two. So that's all covered in my Learn FM synthesis. So that should be pretty straightforward. And that gives us that tone. If I go too much, it's just way too bright, like gross. But that gives us the tone we're looking for, and that's going out. So this is a uh, a series relationship, so right here, not a parallel relationship. Now on one, I have this envelope on the volume, and I it says I've got dampening engaged. So I didn't set that up. That just sort of happened. So I don't know what that's all about. I don't know why it's got that going on over there. But I've got this volume automation. And so I made it so that even when I release the key, it's got this little release. That allows me to have that pluck sound with still having some sort of a sustain. Now on two, operator two, I've got this sort of rise really fast and then get bigger after and then release. That's what gives the boom, 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 the beginning attack. And then when you hold it, the wow, wow. That's what allows you to play it the way you do. It's a really, really kind of fast thing, and it's also got a similar release. So the modulation turns on and off pretty quick as well. Now on three, I was like, okay, that's pretty great. Now on three, I decided, oh, let's really quick. I want to show you something. If I make this a triangle wave, it ruins it. Maybe you don't think it ruins it, but I didn't like it at all. And so I knew I wanted some sort of a a sine wave i wanted that pitch that pitch bendiness so on three i've got it barely coming out it by itself sounds like that it's just a triangle wave with a pretty fast volume envelope 
to do a similar thing. So it's doing a similar thing. And then on four, I've got another thing. Now this one, four by itself, is just a sine wave to help layer in and give the crispness and the clarity to the sound. Because when you run it through effects and reverb and things, that stuff can get lost if you haven't reinforced your fundamental. So I've made it a block, but then I also have the release. So it follows the release. So everything releases out at the end. This is sort of a, a fundamental idea of this kind of a patch. And all together. <coughs> that was with effects, just saying. So then I sent it to the effects. I just sent operator one to the effects. I didn't send anything out. So only the fundamental gets that sort of reverby thing. You may want to send everything to the effects just to touch. But it sort of emphasizes the high end in a way that I didn't want. So I took it away, which is something you can do in Citrus. So uh, the order, uh, I coursed the fundamental, which is why this lower, lower tone is reinforcing that other, the first tone. It's, Operator 4 is reinforcing the fundamental. Operator 1 is being coursed a bit, which doesn't reinforce the fundamental as strongly. I took, I got a little bit specific. I took the spread down. Oh, that's speed. I keep wanting to say spread. I took the spread down, or the crossover, whatever. You know, I came over here. I looked at here, so I knew exactly what I was touching. And I took down the speed. I took down the depth. And I sort of messed with it. I made it, I wanted it to be a more subtle thing, but I wanted there to be some coursing going on. And I, so I send that out just a touch all, more. And so just a sec. So I, I had it up more when I was doing it because I was messing with the reverb. And I turned that to decay time quite a bit and messed with the diffusion and things like that. And so that was kind of interesting. And so finally I was like, hey, you know, that's a pretty, that's a pretty warm tone right there. So why don't I try playing a line with it? And I found a drum loop and... So as you can see, that's that that became a thing. So let's go ahead and make one real quick. So there's got to be a way to make it save the size it was at because auto resize, minimum height, maximum height, off. I hope that fixed it. Okay, so because it's always doing that, and I always have to open it back up, and it's super annoying. Okay, open a citrus. Da, da, da. We'll even get our original melody. So put that in there. Right now, it sounds like this. And we need to go to default. Do, 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 do. We need to take operator one and... I'm going to go back to the 0.5 setting because it just got that low tone. So that we've got our sort of pluck bass already. Now we're going to go over to the volume envelope. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to make a sort of a plucky shape, something like this. I don't want the sustain to be that great. And I want there to be a kind of release at the end. So that allows me to get that playability out of it. I'm going to FM it by two. I'm going to turn two to, to one. Gives me that metallic texture, some people say. It changes the timbre. It's just mo frequency modulation. And I only want to do it a little bit because we saw what happened earlier when I turned it up. So on this one, I also want the modulation to be on. But I want this modulation to sort of turn on. So if I stop here, which is pretty okay, which is pretty fine, I could make it subtler and give it a harder attack or have it turn on a little less. This is already a pretty quick thing. I'd probably bring it up over here. And, oh, this is the modulation. I don't want to control the modulation with it. I want to control the volume. Okay. Volume of the modulating operator. So, there we go. So, now I want to turn it. So, as you can see, you can create a variety of textures. You're generally going to want it pretty fast to keep the pluck on it. So, I'll move it up even. So it opens up like wow, 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 which is, but it's still a pluck. So you don't hear like a clear wah, which is what I wanted. And then I wanted it to sort of, if I hold down the key, I want it to get a little louder, sort of do a little flare for me. And then I'll bring it back down and have a tiny release. So pretty simple setup right there, but it's very intuitive. 
uh, to play. Now, I'm going to modulate it by three because it's sort of a really low tone and I want a little bit of the upper end, just a little, a touch. So I'm going to go to three. I'm going to turn it on just barely. Uh, and I want it to be FMing operator two. Two. There we go. Wrong button. Rowdy mistake. Like that much. Like I just want just a very, very, very small amount of upper end. And that's like it. So I want to put three out a little bit. And I want to make three also a triangle wave, which will also help give some of that. And now three is not got an envelope on it, which is why it's doing that weird thing. So I want it to start off as a pluck and roll out as well. So that's pretty good right there. And I'm gonna put three out a little bit more. I want it to be just in the background and I'm gonna do four as well. This is gonna be a sign tone. And I also need a volume op thing on this. And I want it to hold. So I want it to hold. And then when I release, whoops. Oh gosh dang it, I forgot about the undo rules in FL. Okay, I just do this. So when it releases, I want a tiny release. I don't want like a one of those big ones that something like that. So you can hear that tone. It sort of reinforces the triangle wave, which isn't the greatest deal. Let's bring this down to one. That will change our higher harmonics. Not substantially. I mean, it would be substantial if we were doing more, but we're not. And we're going to take four, make it one. And we're going to leave it at two. And we're going to make it... I don't, I don't want it to ring out that much. So that's pretty much what I had, or pretty darn close. And now we are going to send it to effects. We're going to send one to effects one. And we've got that coursing going on. So I'm going to turn it to two because I want just a little bit of coursing. And that's quite a bit of coursing. You might like that, but I'm going to bring down the depth and the speed. So it's not so obvious. And what is this? A spread. This is the spread. I don't know why it's labeled OP. Operator spread. I don't know. But I don't want such a big image because then, I mean, I'm wearing headphones right now. So stereo imaging with headphones on is a lot easier. With headphones on is a lot easier because you can clearly hear if it's in your left ear or your right ear. To me, that sounded like it was in my right ear. And over your speakers, though, it's going to sound totally different in an environment depending on where you're going to play this. So you need to keep in mind, you know, who am I mixing for when you make moves like this? Or sound design. This is more of a sound design. So I'm going to turn my reverb on. Uh, I'm going to leave the diffusion all the way up. And the decay is already really. So what I'm going to do. Let's uh, Okay. I'm going to turn the effects down a little bit. So we get some more of the dry tone. We could turn it off all the way and use it. But I want to use it as a mix to keep my, so this is a wet dry mix essentially. And there it is. There's our pretty much our same tone. So if you play it, this one's got a bit of a warmer mid end. So to fix this. Let's see. Da, 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 da. I'm going to make this less of a triangle wave and I'm even uh, no I'm not going to mess with any higher harmonic stuff it's a bad idea I dig it I mean I like it it's sort of groovy man it's got that feel for it I turn it up. Just an interesting sort of thing. So if you have any questions about this, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.
really important concept because from now, once you understand that, you understand how the graph manipulates shapes and how why velocity is important to the shapes. So now you should understand the sentence, this is output and this is input and this distorts it, pushing them to their maximum or minimum values according to the curve you set.